Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Painting the Dance, a 30-minute program commissioned in conjunction with our latest special exhibition, Ever Present, First People's Art of Australia. Painting the Dance is choreographed by Maria Randall and will be performed today by Henrietta Bard. Henrietta is of the Kuku Yalanji people in far north Queensland. This performance is the fifth of six sessions, with each session being represented by a different colour denoting a different emotion. This afternoon, the colour theme is yellow. As a bit of a background, for the last few sessions, each session has had a different colour. The first one being black, which represents people and the spirit of the land. Blue, which represents waters, creeks, and patterns of freshwater streams. Green, which represents plants, Mother Earth and nature. Um, red, representing blood and the pain in the, of the history of the First Nations people in Australia. Today's colour yellow shall represent sunlight, energy and celebration. As a treat this afternoon, following this performance, we will also be having an artist talk with Henrietta, the dancer, and the choreographer, Maria Randall, who will be live streaming in from Australia. So we would love it if you all could stick around immediately after uh, for this talk. Without further ado, please put your hands together for painting the dance. People in Australia. Today's colour yellow shall represent sunlight, energy and celebration. As a treat this afternoon, following this performance, we will also be having an artist talk with Henrietta, the dancer, and the choreographer, Maria Randall, who will be live streaming in from Australia. So we would love it if you all could stick around immediately after uh, for this talk. Without further ado, please put your hands together for painting the dance.
Thank you for joining us this afternoon for Painting the Dance. Just to note, in 15 minutes, we will be having an artist talk with choreographer Maria Randall and Henrietta will be returning to join us in this short conversation. So do stick around if you're able to. Before you leave, we would appreciate, for those who are leaving, we would appreciate if you could fill up um, some feedback forms that we will have, some surveys. Um, if you are not leaving and you choose to stay, our colleagues will come to you with a little QR code to help us with the surveys. Um, just to let you know, the final performance in this series of six sessions will take place this evening at 6.30. So if anybody else would like to come and see the final work in its totality, do come back at 6.30. Once again, this program is in conjunction with our latest special exhibition, Ever Present, First People's Art of Australia, located at the Singtel Special Exhibition Galleries on Level 3, City Hall Wing. Thank you and have a great Sunday ahead.
Welcome back uh, to this afternoon's presentation. We now have a bit of a conversation with the artist uh, Maria Randall. Maria is the choreographer of this work, Painting the Dance, and of course, today we saw Henrietta perform um, the work. So I think maybe I'll start the conversation off by asking Maria maybe to tell us a bit more about what inspired her um, for Painting the Dance. What is your inspiration, Maria? Um, I, hey, I'm Maria, uh, Maria and Etta, um, Debbie Work. Um, uh, the, the idea of the work has always been about the perception of what people view Aboriginal people as. Um, and also it's, kind, it's mainly about driving that perception um, and really highlighting the multiplicity of all the things that we are. Um, and highlighting the more so the female um, aspect of that and the roles that we play in our community. Um, this is a, obviously a really small gesture and homage to women um, and the story of um, Indigenous Australia in a way that, yeah, in a, a creative and um, practical way for movement and, you know, exploring uh, the kind of methods that we use to... Um, translate or share our culture. So um, just to, as a bit of background, obviously, this is not the first version of painting the dance. It has been uh, performed a few times in the past, but this yes. is the first time somebody else is performing it because usually it's created and performed by yourself. So yes. what was it like to have this work performed by somebody else? And then I'll ask Etta what it was like for her to, to be doing this. So just maybe yes. Maria first. Yeah. Um, so the many iterations of this, it was um, myself and I think this is uh, the second time that it's actually been performed in colour. Normally it was black and white um, and it's been quite interesting actually even seeing the performance um, now with Etta in it. It's kind of almost like an out-of-body experience because I've been in it so much. Um, it's, it's, it's really great to see you know, having an idea um, and seeing it come to life. Um, so that's been really great. And, again, that thing of when I've done it before, the, it's always been multiple colours of the paint on the body. But this time around I feel like there's a lot more storytelling going on with each colour. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, really, really um, beautiful with the, with the images that I've been seeing. So um, perhaps, Etta, you can share from your perspective um, performing this work that usually is performed by Maria herself. What was it like, the experience and the process for you? Well, it's very different. Like, I, you know, dangerous, dangerously different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, thinking about the first layer and like, you know, it's okay. Then you come to the second layer and you're not quite sure that the first layer has dried. So you're like, oh, and then when you find those spots of the first layer, you're like, oh, okay, um, you know, moving on to the third layer. It starts to get a little bit difficult. And then, um, obviously, the fourth layer, um, even more um, interesting, because then you're finding spots of where to put the paint, but also how to tell the story, which is different. Yeah. So um, I think you mentioned just very briefly in, in um, your conversation, uh, Maria, that this work is a collaborative work with... Um, other Aboriginal women, I mean, in this case, Etta, but that a lot of what you like to do is work in collaboration. Could you speak a bit more about the collaborative nature of your process now? Yeah. Um, I think it, it's uh, more so now as the years have gone on, just the idea of working with other First Nations women. There, there's, there's an empowered process and there's also just this shorthand of knowledge that... that there's some things that you don't need to speak about that you just get and you move you move faster, but then you also move deeper into the process of it. Um, so, for example, um, although this says that, that it's choreographed by me, the, the choreographic scores have been created by me, but the movement is actually up to Etta. So the movement that is created is hers in relation to what our choreographic score is. And there's... Um, with saying to her, you know, black is about our history. Black is about, you know, us always being here. There's no connection, disconnection from the land, the sky, the earth, 
air, all those kinds of things that it's this, you know, it, it's an existing thing that happens. Um, I don't know whether existing is the right word, but that um, there's, and to kind of go, this is what it is, and her to just go, yep, I know what you're talking about. Now I've just got to translate that into movement while I tell this story. So, um, and then to kind of know when you can go deeper with that kind of choreographic score or direction, but then when to know too far is too much as well. So there's quite a lot of, um, you know, you've got to be obviously aware, there's a lot of knowledge, but then also of, of um, clocking that most of the, the women in the room have these languages, these multiple languages in their bodies, not just in their mouth, but in, in, in everything that they do. So how that then translates to the movement while painting at the same time. Um, yes, yeah, so I think this is rather interesting because um, when we first discussed um, uh, this pro uh, program coming. In fact, Ever President was supposed to uh, come to Singapore a few years ago, but then COVID yeah. happened. So we've been in yeah. conversation with Maria for quite a few years to bring this yeah. work to Singapore. Um, mm -hmm. And we talked about, one of the things that we talked about really was representation and how, you know, being um, an ab Aboriginal woman yourself, painting mm -hmm. this dance, you are representing yourself as opposed to a situation where somebody else is presenting you or you have works about Aboriginal communities um, from a colonial perspective, for example. So perhaps would you like to share a little bit more about what it's like to embody that identity in your work? Yeah. Um, oh, it, it, it becomes a more, it's more empowering in that, that instance because it's, I think it's just a place of um, strength uh, and of really kind of, although it, yeah, although it is strength, it's been hard to actually find because not to, to find um, and acknowledge the processes that Indigenous, you know, First Nations mob have um, and how we actually bring that to the forefront, like consciously. I know being... Um, for me, is that there's got to be an action behind it. And so as part of the work that I create and what I do, that's the action for me. So, you know, the words that I use, the, the images, the colours, like, the, you know, everything kind of has an intention to it. It's not just, uh, I, I like that sound or I like that, that colour, so I'm going to use it. So there's, there's always, um, as with everything, <laughs> there's multiple layers and I think of acknowledging that in the process has been something that's been really important. And yeah, all that I can really do is speak on behalf of me and dance on behalf of me and, you know, empower other women that I work with to do the same. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that further detail. So, mm -hmm. you know, there, each of the colours has a theme and I'm just wondering how much of the the meaning behind each colour. Is that your meaning or is that, is that something that Etta also brings to it with each colour and the way it's performed? Because you mentioned the choreographic score, but Etta herself um, being free to interpret it. So, I mean, I'll ask you first, Maria, but then Etta, if you would love to say a few words on how you interpret it. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, it's, they're, they're kind of like, so black was um, like history, Aboriginal people, the strength earth. And so um, while we were kind of rehearsing the, the scores, Etta obviously had to connect to them as well. And so she found her words that kind of, that made sense to her and for her movement. Um, and so it just became an extension of that. And so she then forms her own story of what that, those, um, those choreographic directions are. So that then, again, she's the one that's kind of owning the movement and owning the representation of what's happening. So what about yourself, Eta? Um, Well, as you go through, like, you think about all the different meanings and the movements, but then because of the paint, it limits you to how much you can do. So uh, there was a thing where I was thinking about, you know, do I do all the movement first and then I repeat the movement using the paint? and the emotion behind it. Yeah, so it, each colour is different. Yeah, so I think um, just a couple more questions. 
Um, I think mm -hmm. what people may be interested to know is that usually it's a wall-mounted canvas. So, you know, it's not yeah. always on the floor. But what we did was when we decided this was going to be the space of this performance, um, it was Maria who was like, I think actually maybe if you put the canvas on the floor from the perspective of audiences, it would be a very nice thing to see. But would you be interested in sharing a little bit about the challenges therefore in change? Did you, how much did you have to adapt to this space in the choreography? Um, I think it's, in my head, it's always been about the body being the, the, the brush or the brush strokes um, and the, and yeah, the canvas obviously being there to paint. So I think with it being on the wall, there is somewhat a bit more security in that, you know, you've got your feet on the ground, they're not covered in paint, they're, you know, like the, the paint's actually coming off onto the wall. Um, but then the for me, it being on the on the ground, yeah, there is the the, the safety, but then also that it's about that thing of play as well, like of you know a kid rolling around in mud or you know just uh, just moving and playing and, and the wonder of it of going what what can this do and what you know what's possible and what isn't and finding the freedom and the play within it as well so I think on in both instances there's been um yeah play um but yeah at the back of your mind you're always mindful of the medium that you're using and that you know it's paint and at any time you can slip and you know I've slipped before as well and you know slipped well and truly off the floor <laughs> out of the stage the performance stuff but got back up and just kept kept moving because that was part of the discovery because you can't um unless we're rehearsing with it day in day out it, it's so unpredictable so there's you know there's you, you find somewhat security in it but then you've got to be mindful of being really cautious of knowing that it, you can't control it so speaking of that um obviously one of the other features besides paint was the tape so at, at the end, I think you will notice at the end of this performance, you know, slowly and gingerly, uh, Etta is revealing the tape. So, but maybe first, Maria, could you uh, explain a bit more about the tape? Because we know the different colours of different meanings, but what about the tape? Yeah. So again, it, it's that thing of, so for each of the kind of colours, we've created a symbol for it. Um, and again, I think given that, like the location of where the canvas is placed now, um, there are thinking about the work, um, knowing that you've got like three tiers of like where audience can actually look over. So a lot of it is look, um, thinking about everything from an aerial view, so from the sky looking down. Um, and so in that instance, that's what these, like the, the artwork or the tape, they're just symbols that, that, that are linked to each colour. Um, and then it, it's just, again, another layer of how you know, the, um, that thing of building upon because the colour comes, each time there's a colour put down, there's tape, the tape goes on top. So, again, it's all, you know, experimenting and creating live art as, as it is moving. Okay. So, um, just before I, I ask a few more questions, is there any question from the audience? I, I, yes. Hi, I'd like to know more about the music score. Is it something that has um, roots in the first people? Right, question number one. And also about the movement. I mean, whether the movement from Etta or, you know, your choreography, score, uh, choreography, is it something based in, you know, the, let's say, original movement of the first people? Uh, were you able to get that, Maria? No, I got oh. bits of it. I didn't get all oh, I think it. because of the mask. Um, basically, she's asking about the score, which is actually going to be my question too. Um, if you could tell us more about um, the music behind uh, this work and yeah. whether um, some of the instrument instrumentation used was, you know, Aboriginal music or, or how did you come about creating this 30-minute um, uh, music yeah. piece? Yeah. Yeah, so this the, the original music, uh, the mu music for this is actually from another piece of mine called Diversity. So, it, again, it's um, the there are no um, no kind of drives for from Indigenous rhythms or anything like that. It, it's 
was just about the earth and um, relationship to body, relationship to kind of um, imposing things like metal, like concrete, all those those kinds of things. Um, and what I kind of like to do is I like to use the same sound for a different intention. And so in this instance, that's why I, I used it for this one as well, to just see what um, would also the journey of the movement, what the sound would actually do for it as well, to how that they how they inform one another. Um, and in the yeah the choreographic score, there is um, you know so we done uh, what was it so for water for blue it was water so flow cleansing um, waterfalls because we we've you know got rainforest freshwater salt water all those things that are kind of from where the countries that we come from, and so when we're creating the movement for that. There's also those things of going, you know, is it slow? Is it fast? Um, do we go with the music? Do we go against the music? Um, what are the, the drivers in that instance? And so that's where it, we can kind of rehearse the improvisation of the choreographic score, but on the day it just appears, which is, you know, sometimes scary but also exciting as well. Um, but yeah, I suppose it'd be different if, you, like, for Etta too, like, of actually being inside of it. Yeah. So I was just gonna then pass the question also over to you, Etta. So, um, you know, as mentioned, it's sort of choreographic notes that you're taking from Maria, but then the actual movements you do is your own and it's inspired on the spot, sort of improvised in in some ways. Um, so the the questioner had also asked, like. Um, how are you inspired? Like the movements themselves, are they something that is, you know, inspired by your Aboriginal background? Are they other movements? You know, if you could break down any of them. Yeah. Um, so circles, um, <clears throat> the brushes. I think you, if, did you come uh, when I did the green one? The green one? So I had raffia, which is um, plant material, and I used that as a way to do, if you can see, it's like, um, it's like a splatter, but of, of the grass. Yeah, so that's what inspired that. Um, but yeah, lots of circles, and I try to use the body, so the elbows, my face, my feet, so swiping the feet and doing my feet prints. And then there's a thing, what we call shake a leg. <laughs> so it's like you shake a leg, yeah? And um, when you're dancing, sometimes you might, um, you know, you're dancing on the dirt, so you might do or stomps, yeah? So all these different movements um, I tried to think of, yeah, and, and portray them, but in the artwork. Rhythms, I, did, I was doing the rhythms, so um, hand prints, and they basically, it's, it's our culture. So um, yeah, very different from different countries, but um, yeah, I was inspired by how, we, how our culture is, yeah. So that, I mean, I think, are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, my colleague will pass you the mic. Maybe if you hold it a bit closer because the mask sometimes. Sure. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for the performance. I think where it is is um, we are actually using two different channels of art forms with the art and with paint, painting and then with dance. Um, perhaps it's asking Maria in the sense that um, what inspire you to, to combine these two art forms together as a presentation and then in the form of delivery, how do you balance having a painted artwork in, in the progress as well as in the dance delivery? So how do you balance the, between the two art forms? And is there, while we know that you know, the choreographic process um, improvise and very much you empower Henrietta to do it, um, what is the working process like? Do you, you know, every time you perform, is there like a specific um, picture you already have in mind as an end product and it's, it's all improvised or or how do you balance that you know that it, it's, is it an ongoing story that you want to tell and every time it's different yeah, yeah. you were able to catch uh, that maria yeah okay, yeah great. yeah thanks maria um yeah um so the sorry I'll, I'll, so the kind of inspiration behind the work it came Many, many years ago, I studied my master's and um, it was about like uh, finding what 
kind of residue we leave behind. And so um, what I've previously done in my works is I've put flour on the ground and I've danced like in a line and I've danced down it. Um, for this one, it's similar to, um, you know, like there are the, the historical um, practice of, you know, painting um, art to rocks, to painting the body for dance, to, you know, painting sand for painting um, what's in the stars and all those kinds of things. So it, it's never separate. Um, and so for the kind of inspiration behind this, I was more interested in the imprint of the body and how what that leaves behind. Um, as it's still somewhat in its early stages, so this is probably the first, the probably the fifth time that the work's been performed and the first time that it's that it hasn't been me. So I think um, there's that freedom to kind of, for it to be whatever it, it is in the improvised state. But ultimately what I'd like to do is actually um, really hone it in, spend a bit more time with it and actually paint something that, you know, at the end of it you can see a real distinct artwork. Um, and I think that's going to be really intriguing um, and probably really hard to do, but it's going to be fun as well. I hope that answers the question. Yes, yeah, so um, I think also just to add on to that question um, about the balance between the two um, forms of um, art, because of course you've got this painted canvas, but the dance is also in and of itself an art form. So in your mind, you know, is there a hierarchy of, of significance in the dance or the canvas, or do they go hand in hand at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in my head that they go hand in hand. I think it's uh, the final canvas is just is a kind of documentation of the story of the movement um, to kind of, for it to be seen as opposed to like um, myself or Etta moving in the space because again, there's you see um, the movement and you know the feeling of what you've seen. But at least this way, you've seen the, you know, the journey of it. Like if people have seen the black, then they've seen the story that Ed has put down. And now that they've seen, you know, they've seen all those other colours. So that there's like a, a bigger, um, it's being added onto. And so that you can kind of go, oh, actually I was there. I saw the yellow and I saw that, that movement. I saw the hand. I saw all of that. And so it is kind of just a way of documenting the movement and, and having it being like linger in a really kind of, you know, a longer way than just in your memory. Okay, um, any further questions? If not, um, I think maybe we will wrap it up soon um, with yeah. maybe a final question, which is, um, I think for, for me and, and, you know, from the gallery really. So this has been quite a journey that we've taken together to, to mm -hmm. go through the several years, COVID, being uncertain about whether this could actually come here and when. Um, mm -hmm. I was just wondering, you know, what, what were your thoughts when we approached you to collaborate with us on, on this, with, with the idea of having this ever-present exhibition, which had a different name at the time anyway. But, you yeah. know, what, were, what made you say yes to presenting it here? Just as a wrap-up question, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I think it was, and I think I said to Etta as well before um, heading over that I think given the, the importance of something like Ever Present and having this artwork be part of it was really important. Like I think that, um, that the work has been performed in theatre in theatres or in like a performative kind of space. So it was also intended for, for gallery spaces and so it has been really great to kind of go, that was the dream for what, like the ideal space of where it would actually be. So it's been great to be part of this program and for it to, you know, have a, a life in a different way, like, and of being able to see it, you know, the artwork hang later and, and, and being able to see the journey of, of the movement. Any final thoughts, Etta, about what it's been like now? It's a great experience. I'd do it again. And again, <laughs> except I might just think about the paint that we use. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, it's been a challenge to remove. I'll just say to the ladies, yeah. you don't actually need exfoliation with this paint. <laughs>
Um, but can I also say yes. a, a, a massive thank you to you, Maria, like for persisting yes. and just, you know, staying in there and um, keeping this work and me in this conversation because it's been really great to be a part of and to be considered for this. So thank you so much. No, not at all. I mean, I think I think Singapore audiences are, were very, very thrilled. I mean, we've had sold out um, days. So it's been very, very good to have you and, to, of course, to have you at as well. Um, I think with that, we shall wrap up this little short conversation. And just to remind yeah. anybody who's still here that um, we have one more session this evening to close up the performances. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll have a good Sunday ahead. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.